Hello, this is Pastor Carl Gallups. Thank you for joining me on another edition of Insight. Today is April the 18th, 2018, and sadly, Pope Francis has given us yet one more opportunity for a teachable moment. Now, I say that sadly a little tongue-in-cheek because it's always wonderful to have a teachable moment from the Word of God and the truth of God's Word. But it's sad because the Pope today, as reported in the Christian News Network website, christiannews.net, the Pope reportedly has said something that demands another teachable moment. Here's the article and here's the headlines. Pope Francis tells a boy that his atheist father went to heaven and then counsels that boy to pray to his dad. And as you read this story, again from April the 18th, as you read this story from Christian News Network, we discover that the Pope was in Rome. He was conducting a uh, question and answer session. And at that question and answer session, a young boy was weeping, and the Pope asked him to come up on stage with him. The boy whispered in his ear, supposedly his question, and the Pope repeated it out loud with the boy standing beside him. The article reports that the Pope said that the boy asked the question that his atheist father had just recently died, but he believed his father to be a good man. So therefore, was his father really in hell? The answer that the Pope gave to the boy and the crowd in synopsis form was that because his father was a good man, that God took him to heaven, that his father was not in hell, even though not only was he an unbeliever, but was an avowed atheist. So he told the boy in front of the whole crowd, basically, that you don't have to believe in God, you don't have to believe in Jesus, you don't have to believe in anything. And when you die, as long as you're a good person, you can go to heaven. And then he encouraged the boy to pray to his father. Uh, not Father God, but to his dad, his atheist dad, who was in heaven. Folks, those of you that know the Word of God, and I'm not trying to be disparaging here necessarily to the Pope or to, the, or, or to Catholics or to the Roman Catholic system, it's just that those of us that know the Word of God, we know that this Pope did not answer correctly. Jesus never said anything like that. The Bible never says anything like that. In fact, the Word of God, and I don't want to get too preachy and too long here, but the bottom line is the Word of God doesn't say anything like that at all. It says the opposite. I'm thinking of John 14, 6, when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes unto the Father but through me. In other words, Jesus said, if you don't believe in me, if you don't repent of your sin and call upon me as Lord and Savior, you're not going to make it into heaven or into the presence of the Father. Acts chapter 4, verse 12, there's no other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved but the name of Jesus Christ. No other name. 1 John chapter 5, verse 12, he who has the Son of God has the Father. He who has not the Son has not the Father. And of course, the implication is you have not the life and you, you are, you are uh, not uh, going to make it to heaven. So, I mean, I, I could go on and on, but the bottom line is the scripture is clear. There's only one way of salvation, and that is through Jesus Christ. That is by being born again. And that is something that's accomplished by the Holy Spirit. It's not just simply saying with your mouth, I believe in God. For example, Satan can say that. He does believe in God. And it's not simply saying, I believe in Jesus Christ, or I believe he died on a cross, or I believe he rose from the grave, or I believe this word is the word of God, because Satan can say all of those things. He believes in God. He believes in Jesus. He believes he died on a cross. Satan was there. He believes that he rose from the dead. Satan was there, and Satan was terrified when he saw the resurrection. Satan believes this is God's word. Satan knows how to quote it and to misquote it. Satan believes all of those things. So what's the difference? When the Bible says we must believe in Jesus Christ, what does that mean? It means that we must believe with our heart. John, I mean, excuse me, Romans chapter 10, verse 9. If we would confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart, which means our soul, our life, that God has raised him from the dead, then we shall be saved. There's so many ways to state that, so many ways that the Word of God makes it clear that one only comes into the presence of the Father 
one only leaves this world to go in the, to, to the dimension of paradise, to the dimension of glory, to the dimension of heaven, only if we are in Jesus Christ. Now, this is unbelievable that the Pope would say this, not only to the little boy, but to the whole crowd. Because listen to the message, once again, that the Pope has confused people with. This false message, this false gospel, that you can just be a good person. What is that? The Word of God is clear. There, is, there, there are none that are righteous. No, not one. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is salvation in Jesus Christ. Eternal life. How? In Jesus Christ. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, yeah, but gosh, what does the Pope say in a public situation like that? Do you just tell the little boy, no, your dad died, he's in hell, and everybody else is going to burn in hell if they don't? No, there are, there are judicious ways and biblical ways and truthful ways to, to do something like that. I've been in the ministry a long time, and I've been c confronted with similar situations. So, a more biblical, a more excellent, a more proper answer that would both give the boy some comfort as well as truth and would give the crowd biblical, true teaching, truth from the Word of God would have been something like this. To say to the boy and to say to the crowd, listen, the Word of God is clear that no one makes it into the presence of the Father. No one makes it to heaven unless they are born again in Jesus Christ, confessing Jesus Christ as Lord with their mouth, believing that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead for our sin. The Bible is clear, and then you can quote some scriptures. Then he could have gone on to say, but here's the truth, young man. There are several truths involved with this. Number one, we don't know the heart of your father, particularly at the moment of death. So we have to leave that into the hands of God. Now, young man, I'm not trying to give you false hope, but I can point to the thief on the cross who at the last moment turned his heart to Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, today, you will be with me in paradise. We can say to the young man, perhaps your father had some kind of an experience like that. We don't know, so we trust that into the hands of our loving, gracious, and merciful father. And that's all we can do at this point, young man. And by the way, young man and crowd, here is a teachable moment. Life is short. Life is delicate. Life is precious. And this reminds us once again how important it is that we are right with Jesus Christ, the biblical way. God's way, that we are right with our Creator God through Jesus Christ, His Son, our Savior, our Lord, because at any moment we could breathe our last breath. At any moment, our heart can beat for the very last time. And so, young man, we will pray for your family, we will pray for the peace of your heart, and we will pray that you will go on to be a godly man believing and professing that Jesus Christ is Lord. In the meantime, we trust your Father into the hands of our Heavenly Father. And answer something like that, and there are ways you can adjust that answer, but I've spoken nothing but biblical truth. At the same time, I have given the boy a little bit of hope and comfort that is biblical, and plus, I have made sure that the crowds that are listening to me also receive biblical truth. I pray that this edition of Insight has been helpful to you. In the meantime, we'll continue to keep a watch on everything this Pope says. It seems like almost every time he opens his mouth publicly, somebody's having to come along behind him and clean it up. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and may you have a Jesus-filled day. Thank you for watching this edition of Insight. Pastor Carl Gallops, God bless you. The Satanists wanted to install their own tribute, a pagan idol, on the Capitol grounds right next to the Ten Commandments. Billions around the planet are witnessing a world in the grasp of sadistic spiritual darkness. This unholy alliance has infected our governments, our religious institutions, and our societies. The world appears to be unraveling. But can the evil behind these dark supernatural forces be defeated? 
is everything playing out just as the Bible predicted it will in the final days? At last, you can know the answers to mankind's most urgent questions and learn your destiny among today's events in the new, unprecedented work taking the prophecy world by storm. Gods and Thrones, Nakash, Forgotten Prophecy and the Return of the Elohim by best-selling author, former decorated law enforcement officer, and senior pastor Carl Gallops. This changes everything. Available now wherever fine books are sold.